Well, hello followers. Um, this is day three of my visit to Rwanda, Kigali. And um, I'm very, very impressed with what I've experienced to date. And um, it is really amazing. You know, in every country, there is the good side and the bad side. And I know that there are bad sides here, but what I'm seeing collectively is just amazing. Um, I've been to Europe, several countries in Europe, um, including France, Paris, London, UK. I've been to Canada, several countries in Africa and over 20 states in the United States. And I would categorically state that Kigali is the cleanest, the cleanest city I have ever visited. Um, next to it is Vancouver in Canada, but Kigali is clean. Um, and it is a, a, a community approach to this cleanliness. You know, there are laws in place to address the cleanliness of the city and the country. As you know, they don't use disposable plastic in Kigali or in Rwanda. So plastic like bubble water plastic, plastic that wraps something, plastic that packets something, grocery bags, plastic, none of that is in Rwanda. And the people have taken ownership to make sure that they don't mess up their community so no one throws trash in the street and they clean the street they have city workers who are positioned in different parts of the city and they are actually cleaning the city and so you'll ask me if there are no trash in the streets what are they cleaning this Folks are cleaning the debris from the trees, leaves falling down, the petals of the flowers that fall on the street and things like that. They sweep the leaves off the streets. It's not trash, it's not paper, it's not plastic, it's not bottle, it's not cans. They are sweeping the leaves off the street. And mostly women, middle age, old age women, they are gainfully employed, taking care of their community. And it is so beautiful and heartwarming to see. So if you look at the videos that I've posted, I want you to pay attention to the streets of the videos that I've posted. You will clearly see that the streets are clean, superbly clean. And this is all over. I've driven a good portion of Kigali, and even in the suburb areas, they are clean. In the city, where you would expect a lot of pedestrian traffic, where people would throw trash and things, superbly clean and they are environmentally friendly. So if you look around, this is the peak of dry season in Rwanda, and you will see the lush green and you could feel and sense the, the breeze and, and everything environmental. It is, you know, it's almost like a perfect paradise. You see, when you take care of your environment, you don't cut the trees and all of those things, you reap the benefit. 
it is not as hot as it should be because you could just look on the background and you could feel even the camera moving as I speak. Because the wind is blowing, generating oxygen is just so pristine and beautiful. And so this is the video on cleanliness. And if they could do it in Kigali, Rwanda as an entire country, it can be done anywhere and easily could be done in Sierra Leone. Because it's all about taking ownership one person at a time to clean your community and to make sure it does not happen. And when you clean, it takes care of the health. You have fresh air. As you could see, there are no dust around me on the leaves and the trees because the roads are tired and everything. And I will talk about infrastructure in my next video. Okay, in this segment, I uh, can talk about um, law and order. Rwanda, because it is important that we understand that in every in any civil society one of the measures of a civil society is how you keep law and order and how the citizens then feel safe about being in their country so in Rwanda the police officers then, then deploy them at the entire city every day. And then they in twos and threes and fours. Now every junction, every 400 meters, you go find police them denting up. They're not they bother nobody. They're not they block traffic. They're not they talk to people. They are community watchers so that the citizens then will feel safe <clears throat> for go about their business. And Miss Sesef, as a tourist and a guest, I feel safe <clears throat> that I go walk out with my camera and my hand, and I'm not go afraid to anybody go jogging because the moment you jog my camera or my phone, when they say thief, policing at the junction where you have to go turn for one, they they catch you. And I was talking to the tour guide where they with we, and I asked him, I say, Antoine, with all this police, I guess crime is very low. He said, yes, it's very, very low. He said, but this is not only the team that is on the ground to ensure safety. He said, we even get plain clothes officers who also they patrol the streets to ensure that we are safe in Kigali and in Rwanda, the Rwanda country. So that sense of safety and that sense of law and order is so important in Kigali and Rwanda. And let me tell you this also about um, alcohol those who drink and drive i know we have strict alcohol laws in the u.s and in some other places but they have the strictest alcohol and driving laws probably in the world in rwanda if police smell alcohol now you breath while driving you're not drunk just driving with the influence it's automatically five days imprisonment even before you case start. And no C to C no day, no bribery no day, because that's how you get promotion. Now like Rwanda is by merit of what you've done. So even if you're not a president in Pekin or you're a minister, they are so excited to even arrest you because they would be promoted meritocracy, which is very, very important. And so I feel so safe in this country. I feel so safe. And on top of the cleanliness and law and order, you beginning to see why Rwanda is like the crown jewel of Africa and development. 
If you look at the videos that I've posted and just look at the streets on the videos, you'll be hard pressed to find a leaf in the streets of Kigali. Because they sweep them daily by hand. Not a machine, no, by hand. Employment to people who are happy to get the job done. And on top of the law and order and the cleanliness, the youthful engagement and youthful employment is amazing in this country. The youths are employed because all them policemen they were seen at it. They are like young, 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 young men and women. Them, we they give jobs so they feel a part of their country. They take ownership and pride. That Rwanda pride, patriotism, in the three days I've been here, is being noticeable. Noticeable. The environment is clean. Trees, I mean, I just keep saying about this, are dry season. And the country is lush green. You know, because I say Rwanda is a country of hills. They call it the country of a thousand hills. In Kigali, probably they get over 200 hills and we make up the capital of Kigali. So if I put things in perspective, Bookfields na hill, Kisina hill, Wilberforce na hill, Wellington na hill, Kutorud na hill, Kongotong na hill, Moitong na hill, Abadin na hill, everything na hills. But the environment they're not the cotton trees, they're planting more trees. So in the middle of dry season, the worst dry season, everything is green. The oxygen, the air is so clean. You want to just sit outside all of the time. And when you have a clean environment like this, it takes care of your health in many ways. That it will not get dust because the roads are all tarred. And I'll talk about infrastructure in another video because I want the video clips them to be short enough so that you understand and be able to follow me. So thank you, and I'll talk about the next and my other video. And in this segment, I can talk about um, amenities and infrastructure way I don't experience um, through this visit. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is um, electricity. Um, so I don't have three days and at no point in time have I experienced even the light flicker. It's what we call a seamless distribution of electricity. Uh, my, I, I flew in at night, coming into Rwanda. And from the moment you enter into the airspace of Rwanda, you would see the small cities and towns all get light. And as you approach Kigali, it was nothing but just a beautiful, beautiful aerial view of electricity in display. But, you know, I took it as a one-off. But I don't day, Monday, Tuesday, and now it's Wednesday. And no issues about light. And the people I talked to in, in Kigali, they are like, what are you talking about? Blackout is non-existent out here. And it's not a way of life. Internet is great, now the areas and the houses, so I guess that one is going to be based on your socioeconomic status and your need and all of that stuff, so I cannot speak strongly about that. But let's talk about the infrastructure in the streets. Um, I don't see no road will get portal. No road will get portal. And I don't traverse the city 
miles and miles and miles in the three days and I don't see portals in the street. Uh, even the streets that get reflectors where bombs are, like solar reflectors on the street. So you know you're approaching a bump on the road. And this also inside the main, main city. This on the outskirts of the city everywhere. Then paint the sides of the streets black and white. So you see it. It's just a beautiful array. And I don't talk about cleanliness like it's going out of business. So right now I'm just in awe of how clean the city is. All the roads are tarred, marked. They have speed cameras where they check your speed and take picture of you if you the speed. They have traffic lights, they are functional, all the walk. Um, they have zebra crossing, people observe it, pedestrians. They have road signs, everything, all the lights, them. All everything is like digital on the streets. It's just beautiful to see. They get street lights, solar lights. Um, now the main city towns and roads and suburbs and every little corner, you will see the solar lights them. Because it's an environmental friendly country. The solar lights are posted there, there. Um, I mean, I could not say much about how beautiful this place is and how beautiful the city is. The buildings are modern buildings. Construction sites are clean. Everything. They've developed this country to reflect the modern world. So they're taking care of their own and themselves. So in terms of electricity and infrastructure, it's beautiful. Everything is fine. Let's talk about water, which is also a necessity. And I mean, I'm telling when I say Kigali and Kuanda is the country of a thousand hills. Then consider each 1,000 hills and then stop. Even from where I see it, if I could show you around, all you see is hills and mountains across from even where I sit. You're going to see it all over the place. And so it's... It's really a place where you go say, well, water should be a problem. Rwanda is a landlocked country. Means to the north, they get a border. To the south, they get a border. To the east, they get a border. To the west, they get a border. So it's landlocked. And because of the lots of hills, they would have valleys with little streams and stuff. But is that water enough to supply? the entire country and how have they managed it? What is their, their science behind making sure man get water? Because the hill miss every day, who's on the side, and water day. And I don't see nobody they bring water with butter, I don't see butter not to eat, I don't see even see street pumps. I'll go look again to make sure I'm not missing something. I don't see street pumps the way you go send a treat people that they get water whether they take good at their oath. And I'm going to exploit because I just want to make sure, say, you know, we are not as bad off as it is. Other countries have get things they will go say, yes, but I go and I, it develop, but I they wait for the bot and I'm looking for the bot. Okay? So how have they solved the water of the thousand hills? How people already up these 1,000 hills that they get water? Simple physics and simple law and order. I investigated it. They pump the water from the dung till it reach the peak of the hill. Nobody know the tap them. Nobody know the boss them. Nobody know the suck from away the water they go up the hill. Law and order. Nobody know the cast in a bomber, let up get water. Because I'm eating at the bottom of the hill and me first forget. No. The water goes first to the top of the hill. Then they do a U-turn pipe where the brand can dung the hill and gravity pulls it down. And so all of that they up the hill, they get stayed the one way the bottom of the hill. Simple physics. Simple physics for solve water problem in New Englandville, Ulba Force, Regent. 
all these mountain areas they will get simple physics but they're doing it because of law and order and systems that they monitor because I shall say, if you mistake, say you don't go bust that pipe where they go up because you're not bomb by your water force, the authorities will not even let you do it. So I don't post several videos where don't show the infrastructure. The houses are beautiful, modern. I'm going to a city they call the Vision City today, which is they're developing it based on 21st century eco friendly. See, they're even moving away into electric cars soon into Rwanda. They've gotten rid of plastic. They're going to get rid of plastic altogether and use everything that is biodegradable to make sure that the environment is not damaged. To make sure it's not damaged. So it's really a caretaker environment where ownership belongs to the people and from your house, you take care of it to your compound. And from the compound, we take care of it to the village. And from the village, we take care of it to a town. And from the town, they take care of it to the chiefdom. And from the chiefdom, they take care of it to the district. And the district take care of it to the region. The region takes care of it to the national. It's the same concept of hope for youth. It's one youth at a time, one village at a time, one town at a time, one chiefdom at a time, one district at a time. So collectively, we will build with Mama Salo. You know, we are saying it, but they are doing it here and they have the template. So to Una, the people of Sierra Leone, there is a better place. There are better systems and there are better structures that we could emulate and practice the salon. So until my next production, which will be at the Genocide Center, I take a deep breath on that one because it's going to be an emotional trip for me. But until then, you all take care. God bless you all and peace to you all.